Christmas. Welcome to worship on this Christmas Eve. We begin with the lighting of the Advent candles. If you have candles at home, go ahead and break those out and light them along with us. We already have lit candles for hope and peace and joy and love. The season for watching and waiting is over. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. This is the light of the world, and darkness cannot overcome it. Tonight we light the Christ candle. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. Let the heavens be glad, let the earth rejoice. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Let us pray. When all the world lay in silence and the night was in the midst of its course, your word leapt down from your royal throne, O God. So we rejoice and give you praise that your word may live in us and that we may glorify you forever. In the holy name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. When Jesus Christ was born, he became like us in all things, but without sin. And once, and, he, and since he lived a human life, he knows intimately what it's like to be us. And in taking on human flesh, he also took upon himself all the sins and brokenness of human life. And in his death, that sin and brokenness died, so that we will not be controlled by sin any longer, and we will rise to new life, just as he did. In full knowledge of our brokenness, and, rejo and rejoicing in the freedom and life that Christ gives. Let us confess our sin to God, first in the unison prayer for grace, unison prayer of confession, and then in the time of silent prayer. Let's pray. When we allow darkness to overcome the light, forgive us, Lord. When we reduce Christmas to plastic and tinsel, have mercy on us, Lord. When hardness of heart keeps us from seeing and hearing and touching, let your grace consume us, O God. When the wars around us are of no concern, forgive us, Lord, and move us to compassion for those who suffer. When our caring is not extended to action, move us to seek justice for our brothers and sisters. We come to confess our sinfulness before you and before each other. We are but dust without your love. Remove all barriers that divide us and let there be no obstacle to, uh, to our love for you and for one another. Amen. The truth that we celebrate here is that Jesus Christ came into the world to save us all from sin and death and create a new people for a new world. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. So now let us offer unto God, our, offer, offer ourselves in gratitude for the grace that has been given in Jesus Christ. Give of ourselves, give of our lives, give of our dedication and our possessions in the year to come. Be a blessing to others in the way that Christ has been a blessing to us. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give unto you all these wonderful things, the things of us. We celebrate tonight and we pray that you would change us and make us people who bless the world. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Now, as we go to the word of God read and proclaimed, let us first go to the Lord in prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for your life among us and within us. Move your Holy Spirit to illumine your word so that we can know you and live in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first reading comes to us from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. Listen now for the word of God. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in their thoughts of their hearts. 
He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and all his descendants forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes to us from Luke, the second chapter, verses 1 through 7. But before we get to that, you know, we gather tonight to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, to celebrate the amazing and mind-blowing point in human history where the kingdom of God first broke through into our world. And that story takes place, you know, a couple thousand years ago. It takes us all the way back a couple thousand years ago to the time when the powerful Roman Empire controlled most of the known world including the Holy Land of what is now Israel and Palestine. And the emperor ordered that a census be taken of all imperial subjects. And while we are hearing this scripture, I invite you not to be too quick in your mind to rush to the verses that tell of the birth itself, but pay attention to all the verses that are read, particularly all that is said about the powerful Roman Empire. In those days, a decree went out from, C from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And went, all went to their own towns to be registered. Je Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to, to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and was expecting a child. He, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Now, in most Christmas Eve services that, where I've heard this passage read, the reader seems to speed through the first five verses to get to the birth and then slow down with verses six and seven. You know, uh, in those days, the out from Emperor Caesar Augustus, all which should be registered, registration for taking one Quirinus to the governor of Syria, all the towns on there to be registered. But then, then they slow down when it comes to six and seven. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. You know, that, that's, that's, I, I get it. You know, that's, that's the good stuff, right? That, that's, that's, this is the mind-blowing part. You know, sitting in a, in a warm, decorated church, hearing this on Christmas Eve has this kind of strange divine feel to it. And that's what we came for. You know, that's, that's, we tear through this passage like we tear through the wrapping paper on a Christmas present. Yeah, cool, whatever, neat. Get that stuff out of the way so I can, get, I can just bask in the glow of what I'm here to get. I want to get to that joy of that peaceful, simple, improbable scene of our infant Savior and King being born in a barn. But what I want to take some time to reflect on in the rest of this passage, it's, it's the rest of it, the, the, the wrapping paper on the birth of Jesus. Because if we don't, then we miss out on something that makes this gift just so special. The Roman Empire was a huge part of life in the first century for most of the known world. The empire ruled the entire shore of the Mediterranean Sea, North Africa from Morocco to Egypt, all the way down the Nile River. All of what's now Israel and Palestine up to Turkey, even with an arm stretching out to the, the Persian Gulf. And from Greece and Romania, stretching all through Austria, Germany, Switzerland, Belgium, France, Spain, Portugal, and southern England. It was an empire of almost unmatched military might, and its richness and lavishness were practically unbelievable. You know, it was common practice in Roman cities for their grand structures and mansions and palaces to be constructed of stones that had been shipped from all over the empire. Cities in Italy with columns of rock from the southern reaches of the Egyptian Nile, rock quarried by hand and transported by ox cart and, and sailboat. Rome was this massive monument to itself built of marble and military might. And Luke is careful to tell us that this is the empire into which Jesus is born. He mentions Caesar Augustus, the sovereign emperor of Rome. He mentions Quirinius as governor of the province of Syria, emphasizing the local control that Rome had in the region. And the, and, and the census that Caesar had ordered of the entire Roman world. And that, that's why Joseph and Mary were traveling to Bethlehem. That, that census is the biggest indication of the character of the Roman empire that is given in this passage. At, at a word from Caesar, every resident of the vast lands of the empire had to go from wherever they were to the city of their family's ancestral origin so that they could be accurately counted. 
Why? So that the Roman Empire could get an accurate head count of all the people that it ruled. So it knew how much tax to extract from conquered lands. What power? The power to order around thousands and thousands of conquered peoples, to use them like pawns, to nicely number them so they can know the extent of their own glory. But for all its power, for all its riches, for all its luster, it had none of the power and glory present in the manger as Christ was born. It didn't have any of the power of God who breathed the word into existence from nothing. None of the power that created human life from dust. None of the glory and the splendor of the God for whom the earth is a footstool and causes the sun to rise and the rains to fall. A new and more powerful kingdom was coming to the world, and it didn't enter the world in pomp and splendor of a palace of 27 different kinds of stone from all around the world. It came in the simplicity of a stable. Instead of being brought about by a powerful emperor and his armies of soldiers, it was brought about in a, to, by a little baby born to simple, average people. And the kingdom of God, instead of being made of marble and military might, is made of people bound together by the Holy Spirit. Ordinary people. People that God loved so much that they got laid aside, that God laid aside the glory of heaven to become an average human, like us. To go through the stuff that we go through. To sweat in the summer and shiver in the winter. To have hunger and thirst. To get tired and annoyed with the people around us, just like we do. He chose to go through the long and painful and awkward process of growing up just like us. Jesus was born to show everybody that the world was, to everybody to show the, that the world, the way the empire sees it, is not the way that it really is. The kingdom of God is the way the world really is. Not an empire built on conquest and slavery and opulence and control, but a kingdom built on justice and love. Not an empire that capriciously throws its weight around to benefit a few, but a kingdom of self-sacrifice for the good of all. In reality, there isn't an emperor who uses people as pawns. But we have a king who loves us and who views our lives as so precious that he died to preserve them. The Jewish people were expecting the Christ to be someone who would fight the empire, and many were disappointed when Jesus didn't take up arms and fight the empire militarily. But Jesus did fight the empire. He fought the empire's cruelty with mercy, its oppression with freedom, and its greed with simplicity. And Jesus fights the empires of the world today. The kingdom of God is still fighting cruelty, oppression, and greed. It's fighting through every person who claims that this little baby born in a stable is their Lord and their God, and, li and, li and lives that bear out the truth that the horrible state of the world is not the way that it must be, that God wants more for us than this, that God is working in us for more than this. You know, so much preaching of Christ centers only on salvation for eternal life without talking about how Christ changes the world for us right here and now. And that, to me, is the exact opposite of the message of Christmas. If God were concerned only about salvation, Christ would have stayed in heaven and said, come here. But instead, Christ says, I'm coming to you, and I'm going to change your life, and we're going to change this world, and we're going to make it better than any measly marble empire could ever dream of being. Friends, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ because it marks the beginning of the arrival of the people of God. And celebrates the moment that we received the grace of Jesus Christ. The grace of Jesus Christ is given to you. And as you leave here tonight, know that you have been given grace. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace enough to know the world is now too fearful for anything but the truth. And too small for anything but love. So go and give grace to the world as it has been given to us. Amen. Let us close by praying together, praying for the world, praying for the, praying for the church, and ending with the Lord's Prayer. Loving God, help us to remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the song of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and worship of the wise men. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the blessing which Christ brings and teach us to be merry 
with clear hearts. May the Christmas morning make, make us happy to be your children and Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving, forgiving and forgiven. For the sake of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, go forth in the peace of Christ. Live a life in the kingdom of God. And Merry Christmas. Thank you.